Hi students, it's Ms. Bully here. Today we're gonna look at making an, a Ted Harrison inspired art piece. So this is the materials that you're gonna need. You're gonna need some paper, I'll talk more about that later. Your watercolor paints and a palette to mix your paint on. Some brushes, either oil pastels or wax crayons. And then water and paper towel as well. You're also gonna need a scrap sheet of paper and a pencil just to plan out your painting. So here I have my scrap sheet of paper and I folded it up into four boxes. So I folded it and now I have four boxes to draw some of my plans. So I started by looking at this painting of Ted Harrison in the left uh, corner of the video. And I just searched it up online and I'm sort of, I'm trying to draw a little quick sketch that's inspired by this painting. I've simplified it quite a bit, but I'm just taking inspiration from that example. So all I'm doing is just using my pencil to sketch out uh, where the outlines of my mountains and sky and all the other things that I may include in my painting will go. So you're going to do this uh, in all four of the boxes of your sheet of paper. So you're going to have four different options for what you might use for your final painting. Okay, so here we go. I'm drawing a couple of other options. And I've, I looked at some references. Remember the one with the northern lights in the sky? All right, so now that I've done my four planning sketches, I'm gonna get some paper. So watercolor paper will work good for this project. I don't know if you can tell it has kind of a bumpy texture. I've also grabbed some cardstock, which is just like a thicker type of paper that can kind of handle getting a little bit wet. So if you don't have any types of paper like cardstock or watercolor paper, that's okay. You can use your visual journal or whatever paper you have on hand. So I have placed my paper vertically, straight up and down in portrait orientation because I've noticed that Ted Harrison often does the same in his artworks. So now that I've, I've chosen the one out of my four options that I liked the best, and I am now drawing that onto my larger sheet of paper. So out of my four choices, I'm gonna choose one, and then I'm gonna transfer that drawing over into my larger sheet of paper. And I'm just drawing it with pencil for now. Okay, so now that I'm done, I'm gonna grab either my pastels or my crayons or both, whichever one you have on hand. The reason why it needs to be uh, pastels or crayons is because those are waxy materials that resist water. So when I paint over them with my watercolor paints, uh, the watercolor paints will not go on top of them. Uh, if you don't have them, I'll chat more at the end for another different way that you could do this project. So I'm gonna take a pink oil pastel because I've noticed again through my studying earlier in the week about how Ted Harrison often does uh, an outline in like a light bright color. So I've chosen pink and I'm just going to go with my oil pastel and do pretty, pretty thick of an outline around the different mountain shapes that I've drawn. I don't have to do all of the outlining in pink I can choose some other colors as well. So in addition to outlining, you might also decide to color in certain areas like I've done with the moon or sun shape there. 
Um, and I'm doing the same thing with my pink pastel in the sky. I'm actually coloring in areas with the pastel and the crayon. All right, now I'm ready to go in with my paints. So I'm gonna need some water to mix with my paint. And just like I did with my um, my color mixing video, I'm gonna put a little puddle of water on my palette, my plastic palette, and I'm gonna put water and mix the paint into the water. And I know that Ted Harrison does really vibrant, bright colors often, so I'm gonna try to use more paint and less water. So you can see kind of how dark my wash it my wash is and I might even end up making it even more darker so now all I have to do is just fill in where I put my pencil marks and where I outlined with my pastel so notice how I don't even really need to be careful where I drew with my pastel if I paint over that area see it's not going to it's not gonna have paint there because it's resisting the water so it's resisting the, the paint with, with the water in it. So um, you don't necessarily need to be super careful with, with watercolors. If you are using a different kind of paint, then that's a whole different story. But with the watercolor paints, it resists the paint. So I don't need to worry about accidentally going out of the lines. Whoops. Uh, what I could do if I accidentally do that is I can just kind of paint over it afterwards. Okay, so now I've done my sky, I'm gonna let that dry. And now I'm gonna mix a blue wash. So a little puddle of blue, and then mix some blue paint, in, or sorry, a little puddle of water, and then mix some blue paint into it. And now I'm gonna paint those two mountains um, near the background, the two larger mountains, and fill in those areas. And again, whoops, I went over and I went out of the lines, that's all good. I don't. I don't need to care too, too much about that. I can kind of paint over that area and blend it in with water if I want later on. Right, so you, you'll see that I've done uh, the other two mountains and I've mixed it a little bit of a purplish blue by adding some purple into my blue paint. And now I am doing uh, this background area and I've added some water to my purple paint that I used on the mountains. I've added some water to make it lighter. So with this type of paint, if I want it to be lighter, I won't add white like what I what we did with our tints and shades lesson. Uh, I will add water. And also something to know, uh, watercolor paints, when they dry, they dry slightly lighter. So just something to keep in mind if you're wanting to get these vibrant colors, we might have to go a little bit more vibrant and dark than what we want because when it dries later, it's going to be a little bit lighter than what it looked like when it was wet.
All right, so remember when we learned about Ted Harrison earlier, we learned that he often used contrast. So I'm gonna try to do some dark blue. So what I've done here is I've mixed blue with a little bit of black into it. So thinking about, again, what we learned about tints and shades, uh, is there a way that we can add contrast to our artwork? So we wanna have some dark colors and some light colors in our painting. And some bright colors and some light colors. Right? We wanna have a bit of variety. Okay, so I'm done my foreground and my mountainous area. Now I'm just gonna finish up my sky by adding a little bit of water to my wash, my, my orange wash that I mixed earlier. I added a little bit of water there. And now I'll just paint in those white areas. I actually really do like how they look when they're just pure white, but um, I think that it might look more finished if I add some more lighter orange. So again, if I want my paints to be lighter, I will add water to the paint. If I want it to be darker, I'll add more paint. Or I could also add a little bit of a darker color. So purple or black, depending on what color it is. That wouldn't work for yellow. You could add black to yellow, but you couldn't add purple to yellow. You turn it brown. All right, so now I've filled in all of the areas with paint and I'm just gonna let this dry and I'll take a photo of it. So once it dries, it won't be as wrinkly. So wait until it dries to take your photo. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm very excited to see the awesome artwork that you create. Have fun.